Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. What in the world are you doing here? I'm not kidding. What are you doing here in this masjid at 1.20 at night? What are you doing here? I'm asking you a sincere question. What are you doing here? Listening to me? Girl, I hope you got a better intention. <laughs> what, are, what are you doing here? To become closer to Allah. Walilah and hamd. May Allah grant you that. What else are you doing here? To learn more. You do that in the daytime. <laughs> what are you doing here? All right, to do the boogie woogie. Is that what it's called? The boogie woogie? The hokey pokey? Don't you tell nobody you came here to do the boogie woogie with me. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what she's talking about. I don't know her at all. Okay. I want us, the reason I ask you that question is because I want us to make like some, some intentions, some serious ones, right? Because we know the beloved messenger of Allah, he told us that every action is by his intention and you will be dealt with according to what you intended, which is, I can't tell you the level of mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is connected to that hadith. Like, you going to give me what I intend? Even if, it's, even if I didn't attain it, if I didn't actually reach it, but you're going to give it to me because that's what I intended. Subhanallah. So I'm like, okay, well, that's easy. So let's make some intentions. Let's, let's in this moment, I'm going to call some out. You snatch them up, put them in your heart, right, and root yourself by it so that we know that we're here that we're going to get the maximum benefit, especially in Ramadan, subhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the maximum benefit, all right? So we're here by the intention to expose our hearts to the mercy of Allah. We're here by the intention to expose our souls to his transformation. We're here by the intention to expose our minds to the rectification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're here by the intention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will heal our hearts. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would remove all of our trauma and our sadness. We're here by the intention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would grant us istiqama. We're here by the intention to pour our hearts out to Allah and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer our dua. We're here by the intention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would number us amongst those from salihin wa salihat. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would number us from amongst those who are siddiqeen. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would number us from amongst those that are muqarrabeen, that are near and close to Allah. We're here by the intention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would grant us an intimacy with him because we see we're seeking him in the middle of the night. We're here by the intention to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us and our entire life lineage to Yom Qiyamah. We're here by the intention to make a means of connection, to be a connection that is strong and steadfast and never breaks for us and our families and our friends and those whom we love and our entire lineage to Yom Qiyamah. We're here by the intention that we could be saved from the torment in the grave and the punishment, the hellfire, even for the blink of an eye. We're here by the intention that us and our entire lineage and all of our children and those whom we love and our soba would be saved from the fitna of Masih had the Jan. We're here by the intention to connect to the Prophet Muhammad and never break tie with him. We're here by the intention to be included amongst those who gave a pledge to the Prophet at the moment of Aqaba. Ya Rabbi, include me with them. Ya Rabbi, I, I, we're here by the intention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would number us from the people of Quran. We're here by the intention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would number us amongst those who have dhakirin Allahi kathiran. We're here by the intention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would mold and shape us into the servants of his that he's well pleased. We're here by the intention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would love us. We're here by the intention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would grant us and our entire lineage to Yom Qiyamah, Jannah to Firdaus and Allah. We're here by the intention to be with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the dunya and the akhirah. We're here by the intention to be guided by the Prophet in our dreams and our awakened state for our entire lives, us and our entire lineage. We're here by the intention to seek refuge in Allah, like uh, the people of Ashab al-Kahf. 
We're here by the intention that we can be, that we can have a suhba to strengthen the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu We're here by the intention that the beloved messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam would be proud to say that we were from amongst his ummah. We're here by the intention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would grant us the highest levels of success and that we would never fail. Fi dunya wa akhirah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Ameen ya Rabb. Ya Rabb, please accept all of our intention. For we didn't come here for some small. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about those in the Quran who abandon their beds. Seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah number that we're from amongst them. So alhamdulillah wa shukrilah, I'm so honored to be amongst you because there's something that we do together that we can't do alone by ourselves. Right? There's something that we bring together, subhanAllah, literally by connecting with each other, right? In this night, we become, we become like a stronger chain, right? We add to the, to the barakah of the gathering. It's increased, right? Allah gives us ziyah. He's giving us increase, subhanAllah, bihamdi, subhanAllah, adim, by coming together. And we want to, we want to make sure that we're, we hold firm unto that, right? And so, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, I want to talk about some stories in the Qur'an that you guys are all familiar with, right? You guys all know these stories, subhanAllah. It's just a reminder for, inshallah, perchance, that it might be a benefit to us. But when we hear these stories, subhanAllah, it's like digging, right? Anytime we hear these stories over again, it's like digging. You, you're doing the same action over and over and over again, right? And for a while, it feels like it's my, why are we saying this, reciting the same fact? Yeah, 17 times a day, but then something happens, subhanAllah, and you, struck, you strike gold, right? Then you strike oil. You find something valuable. It happens in that moment when you've been praying for you don't know how many years, subhanAllah, a decade, half, you know, more than a decade plus, and you haven't been feeling it, and then one day, subhanAllah, you hit a certain, you, you get to even, and it hits differently. Right? And your tears begin to flow, and you realize I've been doing the same action, but now it's different. And so I'm hoping, bi'idni rabbi, by us just reviewing some of these stories of women in the Qur'an, or even just women that are listed within our tradition, inshallah, that we become closer to ourselves. And that we know who we are, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to begin with. And then what do we have to do with Allah? And what does Allah have to do with us? That's really the question. What does Allah have to do with us? So I want to start off telling you this particular narration. It's like one of my absolute favorite narrations. With well, the beloved messenger of Allah, he's in Isra at Miraj. He's literally traveling through the heavens with Jibra'il alayhi salam. An Isra and Miraj. And as he's traveling, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam smells something so beautiful, he can't ignore it. And I want you to, I want you to imagine this because the Prophet ﷺ, when he arrives, right, and, and he's granted the opening, the literally the, the, head, the skies open up. The Prophet ﷺ is greeted by angels upon angels sending salawat. Can you, first of all, we know that the Malaika love good smell. So I just say, subhanAllah, what the, the sit must have been like, right? From that, just the smell of the Malaika. Right, the smell of the, the, the first heaven and the second heaven and the third heaven. And he sees seeing, subhanAllah, of Jannah, what that must have smelled like. But then for the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to have a smell that exceeded that, that made him stop in his tracks and say, Ya Jibra'il, alayhi salam, what is that smell? What is that? And he says, oh, this is the smell of the hairdresser of the daughter of Pharaoh. He doesn't even mention her name. He says, this is the smell of the hairdresser of the daughter of Pharaoh. First of all, this is like, okay, now I'm, I'm really bad at this, so you guys have to help me out. When you're a hairdresser, you're a blue-collar worker? 
Yeah, blue collar worker. Okay. You're basically like, you know, you're not like CEO of a company. You're not like, you know, some high status. You're not coming from like some high status. You're you're the hairdresser, not a pharaoh's wife, not like the hairdresser of the queen. No, you're the hairdresser of the daughter of Pharaoh. And so, subhanAllah, the hairdresser, the, so the Prophet Sallallahu sent him is like, I, I, I need to know, like, what is so wonderful and significant about her that, subhanAllah, I can smell her, I can smell her while I'm traveling right through on my journey to meet Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Right? So, tell me, tell me about her. And so he says, well, he begins to narrate to our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that basically one day she's combing the hair of the daughter of Pharaoh and she drops the comb. And as she drops the comb, subhanAllah, she goes and she picks it up and she says, Bismillah. And so the daughter turns around and said, what did you say? She said, I said, Bismillah. She said, are you talking about my father? She said, no. No, child. I'm not talking about your father. Why? She says, Allah Rabbi wa Rabbuk wa Rabbil Alameen. That Allah is my Lord. And, you know, you probably don't know. Allah is your Lord. <laughs> and the Lord of the universe. And so the daughter becomes angry. She's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell my father what you said. And the hairdresser said in my southern accent, go run tell that. <laughs> and so she goes and she tells her father, right? Like, pompous princess, right? Daddy, my hairdresser said, Bismillah. And so he says, what? She said, yeah. She's been infected with this religion of Musa. So, you know, in father fashion, in tyrannical father fashion, he says he's got to prove to his daughter, right, who he is. So he says, well, you, go, you tell her to come here. You tell her to report to me. So she comes, right? Here I am. He said, do you believe in the Lord of Musa? She says, Allah Rabbi, or a book, or a bil alameen. Talking about speaking truth to power. She's not doing it from like behind a, you know, a screen, typing Facebook, hitting that change button, boom. Right? No. She's standing directly in front of him. She knows what he's capable of. She knows all the babies that he's murdered. She knows all the men that he's murdered. And she says, Allah is my Lord and your Lord and the Lord of the universe. And so he says, okay, like I, I see your boldness. So he says, you know what? I'm, I'm not even, in this moment, I'm not even going to address you directly. Because I, I see your, you know, how you're presenting yourself. So he orders his soldiers, go bring her entire family and bring them to me. So her husband also worked in the court of Pharaoh. So he brings her husband. They go bring her five children from her home. One of them is an infant baby, like a baby in her arms. And they then, he then orders a cauldron pot to be boiled of oil, not just water, of oil. You know, the difference between water and oil is that when it boils, if it touches you, it's going to stick. So even if you wipe it, it's gonna, the skin is going to come with it. So they boil this oil until it's bubbling. And he asked her, hey, say what you said again. She looks at him and she says, Allah Rabbi, Rabbuk, Rabbil Alameen. And he looks at her husband and he says, you allowed this? You let this happen? You let her be infected with this religion? And her husband says, Allah Rabbi, wa Rabbuk, wa Rabbil Alameen. 
when Pharaoh becomes infuriated. He orders his clothes to be ripped off and thrown into this boiling oil. And in front of his wife and his children, they boil him to his bones. And she's standing there watching. I can't imagine. I can't imagine the tears in her eyes or the lump in her. I can't imagine how she must have felt. And then he asked her again. She answered the same way. They started with her oldest child. He asked her again. She responded the same way. He put the next child and the next and the next until she's holding the baby in her arms. And he asked her again, you want to change your mind yet? And at that moment, she looks down at her baby. And of course, with the mother heart, she holds the baby a little bit tighter. And subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifests a miracle in her arms. This is the first child that we know to speak. This child speaks and says, Mama, don't be afraid, for you are on Sirat al Mustaqim. And literally, even in that, even with Pharaoh hearing that, he then becomes more angry, rips the child out of her arm, and then, subhanAllah, boils her, boils the, the child in this pot. And he asks her again, and she says, I just have one request. Bury us in the same grave that we could be together in the akhirah. Oh, she said, I'm not, I'm not afraid. I know you're only sending me to my Lord. I, this, is a, this is a whole level of iman. A whole level of taqwa. I, and subhanAllah, he does the same thing to her. He boils her all of them alive. And so when the Prophet Sallallahu hears this, he's just, he's just overwhelmed. Right? He's just overwhelmed. And of course then the question becomes, like and when he tells the companions this, the question becomes like, how, like, who is she? How does she, how does she learn about, like, how does she know the deen? What happens? So I'm, what happens next? You know what happens next? Queen Asiya runs. When she hears the story, she runs to Pharaoh. And she said, did you, did you murder her and her entire family? She's, she's asking him, like, I know that you're cruel. I know that you've done some horrible things, but tell me you didn't do that. And he says, I did. She was talking about this religion of Musa saying that Allah was her Lord. And she said Allah was my Lord. And he began to laugh. And at that moment, Queen Asiya confesses. Queen Asiya says, Allah Rabbi, wa Rabbuk, wa Rabbil Alameen. And this is the moment where he literally orders all of her clothes to be ripped off. He drags her by her hair, hangs her off the balcony. And initially the people are screaming, oh, Pharaoh, this is the beautiful, the queen Asia, the kind, the merciful, the generous, please. And he says, you know what she, you know, you know what she said? And then immediately the people back off and say, oh, Pharaoh. He murders her, subhanAllah. He literally leaves her first in the desert naked for three days, expecting that the animals would eat her alive. And he sends the soldiers to go find her after three days. And when they find her alive, they literally drag her back by the, by the horse. They drag her back. And when she gets there, he's like, you're still not dead? So then he orders a horse to be tied on one side of her and another on the other. And he keeps whipping the horse until it's literally separating her limbs and the skin from its bones. She begins to make a dua that's mentioned in the Quran. She says, my Lord, build with me, build for me with you a house in Jannah. Right? 
In Surah Al Tahrim, she meant like, build for me with you a house in Jannah. And SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala literally shows her in that moment the malaika building her home. She smiles. She smiles. Pharaoh becomes enraged. He says, How dare you? How dare you? I'm torturing you after everything I've done. And you smile? Why? You smile? And she says, And save me from Pharaoh and his and his and, and the evil, his evil folks, his evil, the evil people who come with me. Come with him. And in that moment, subhanAllah, he's he's so angry that she smiled. She makes this dua. Like, save me from him, Ya Rabbi. So he then orders a catapult to crush her body. Right before the catapult comes, the catapult's a rock, a stone, a boulder to crush her. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes her soul. Now you might be wondering, why do I tell you this story tonight? Because in these moments, what will you do for Allah? What will you withstand to say, Allah, I, won't, I will not deviate from this day? I am, how will you say, I'm not concerned about the people? I'm not concerned about their opinion of me. I'm not concerned about my perceived notion of what they might do to me, whether imagined or real. I'm not, I don't care. What I care about is what does my Lord think of me? This is what Usada Shamira was talking to you about when she says, listen, right? Whether you look like the, I don't know, America's next top model, I might be aging myself. <laughs> totally might be. And truth is, I have no, I've been in Gambia. I have no idea <laughs> what is current. You know, they have like, what's trending? I have done this, I don't know. <laughs> no idea. But no, I don't look like the next top model, or I'm not, you know, I'm not concerned, or I'm not jealous of, of what they have, and what the disbelievers are. I don't, I, what I'm concerned with is Allah Rabbi. I'm concerned that I'm going to face my Lord one day. Will my Prophet وسلم, smell me coming with a beautiful scent, subhanAllah? You know, at the moment of death, when they remove the soul, when the angel of death comes and he removes the soul, there's a wrapping, a beautiful wrapping that they do for that soul that's either like a beautiful cloth, right? Or it's a, something that is horrible. And either it's blessed with like the, mo the most blessed of smell. Right, right? It has that scent or a putrid smell. And that, and when that soul is wrapped and it's going through that first minor judgment, this is how the angels receive it. Either the angels will be receiving that soul, right? Saying, subhanAllah, who is this beautiful soul? And the malaika will then chant what the people said about this. This was the one, subhanAllah, who stayed up in the MCC and prayed all night, right? This is the one that, subhanAllah, she was tired, but she came to make dhikr of Allah. This is the one that, subhanAllah, no matter how far it was to be in the company and the suhbah of the Muslimin, subhanAllah, they, they traveled to it. Where there was, there was lessons and opportunities to learn to be closer to Allah, azawajal, they were willing to make hijrah for it. They're the ones that, subhanAllah, they were reading Quran and crying and weeping in the last of the night. They are the ones who were seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're the ones who, yes, they were wearing hijab when other people were making fun of them. They are the ones who were concerned about their death when other people were only concerned about how they were going to live their best life. They were concerned about how they were going to die their best death. That's what the angels subhanAllah will be saying about this beautiful soul. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has us fasting, one of the lessons, one of the lessons, even in staying up in the night, is about for you to think about your ending. For you to think about, Ya Allah, give me husn al-Khatima. 
what is this what is the what is the beauty what is the state of my soul what is the state of my soul because our actions only tell us about the condition of our soul that's what our actions tell us if we are eager and running to the salah right and like y'all don't be i i can't wait to talk what time i gotta pray i i have to have a conversation with you y'all don't be I just, I want to praise you. I'm just so grateful to you, right? I have, so I just want to say subhanAllah, we have these subhanAllah I do. Like, I just can't wait to be an intimate. I'm looking for a moment. I got to find a place I need to be in an intimate moment with you, Ya Rabbi. Or are you the one who's like, okay, I got like 10 more minutes before Asr comes in. I'll pray in five. Right? SubhanAllah. Or if it's like, you know what, what I'll do is... I'll sleep. And then I'll get up and pray Isha like three minutes before Fudger. <laughs> like, may, may Allah save us. May Allah save us. I know, we've all been there. You're laughing because you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> may Allah, this is, this is why, honestly, this is why we need that dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew our weaknesses so well, right? That he gave us like two, he gave us like, he gave us like a really high example, right? Like our mother Maryam. Our mother Maryam, subhanAllah. Would I, would I, I, I have to, okay, I'll tell you that's okay. So either like this example, like the purest of all women, right? Or he's like, listen, <laughs> at the end of time, I'm going to need you guys to make this dua. Allahumma indaka afu wa tihibbu afu 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 anna. Right? Like, oh Allah, you love to pardon, so please pardon me. Because <laughs> right? Allah knows. Allah knows our state. He knows our condition. Right? MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Usada Shemir, she has big, she has high hopes for us. She has high himma for us. May Allah bless her. Say, may Allah bless her. Say, Amin. She has high himma for us. I'm saying, subhanAllah. Yeah. I'm just like, oh Allah, please, make me that woman she's describing. Ya Rabbi, make me that woman. Ya Rab, Ya Rab, Ya Rab. Make me that woman that's just, that we never, when I saw those scattered dots on the screen, I was like, I <laughs> She said, that looks like, but she said, subhanAllah, it's going to be, what is this, that's your, your brain? I felt like that was my brain. Was that was like, the, the perfect guy was like, oh, that's not me. And I saw that, I was like, yeah, that's my brain. That's my household. That's my car. <laughs> it's like, oh, Allah, make me. Oh, you see that, mashallah. The other one looks like the women in the ranks, right? The Muslims holding it down. Oh, Allah, make me like that. That subhanAllah, that we're, we're definitely between the hope and yet the fear, right? The hope and the fear. And the truth is we need, we actually need to keep striving though to be like those women. Because those women are, we know that they're guaranteed Jannah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted those women to be known so well. And there's just some beautiful things about these women that I just, when I think about the mother of Sayyidatina Maryam, and the dua that she made. First of all, what I, what I want to talk about is that in, in the case of Al-Imran, we actually don't have any details, a lot, about Al-Imran. We actually don't have even one of his dua. We actually don't know his story. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually telling us the story about his daughter and about his wife. I, 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 for me, when in those moments, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to all women, listen, there's going to come a day when people are going to try to trick you into thinking that your deen doesn't honor women. There's going to come a day when people are going to try to trick you and say Islam doesn't give women rights, Islam doesn't honor women, that you women are oppressed, you just don't know it, you've somehow digested, uh, what is it that when you have like, you've ingest, not ingested racism, like internal racism, right? They've internalized 
So what is it when you've done it for like misogyny, internalized misogyny? Is that right? I feel like it's not, but you know. <laughs> you, you know what I'm talking about, right? Basically when we have like, when we've internalized oppression, implicit bias, implicit bias against women in this case. Yeah, that's all that sounds good, right? <laughs> Sounding real intellectual right now. Yeah, what is it? Stockholm syndrome. Stockholm syndrome. You guys know about that? I'm a university professor. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That there, I'm not, there's there's a lot of kind of says they're going there's going to be a moment, right? There's going to be a moment when they're going, Shaitan is going to try to trick you. Outside you, uh, Shaitan is going to try to make you a renegade from your deen. That, uh, that Shaitan is going to try to convince you to come out of your clothes. That Shaitan is going to tell you that that's empowering. To be more available to the male gaze is somehow now more empowering. What? I want us to think about that. That somehow to be more, you know, to, to actually give him more access. The complete stranger of men, I'm saying. The men who could care less about us. The men who don't know our name. They're just benefiting from you walking down the street. That somehow to be available to them, to, have, to give them free access, makes you more empowered. Come on. But Shaitan will try to trick you. And by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning these women in the Quran, he's saying, listen, 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 listen. I love you. I love the modest ones amongst you. I love the ones that you think that nobody knows you. I love the ones that subhanAllah have sought refuge in me. I love you for the ones that have sought an intimacy with me and you're alone in your room crying out to your Lord. SubhanAllah, I love you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I'm going, I love you so much that even the secret moments between us, I'm going to make it known to the entire world to the end of time. They're going to be reciting our love story every time they make a khatam of Quran. They're going to recite the love story between me and you. We're going to recite the love story between the mother of Maryam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're going to recite the love story between our beloved mother Maryam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How she was willing to endure, subhanAllah, that she, she wasn't, women weren't allowed inside the, the seminary at that time. Women were not allowed to study. But her mother had already made that promise to dedicate Right, her child to Allah. So when she gave birth to, to a female, right? She said, Allah had given birth to a female. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I know full well. Where that kid laysa kill untha. And this the the language behind this, the grammar behind this, is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Listen, <laughs> you thought you were gonna give birth to a male, but what I gave you is going to be better than what you expected. And that kid laysa kill untha. You said, what are you saying? You're just trying to push us up. Okay, well, let's ask the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, Ya Rasulullah, who's more worthy of my love and my honor? What did he say? Your mother. And who after that? Your mother. And who after that? Your mother. And then who? Your father. So three times the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said that. He said, paradise lies at the foot of who? Your mother. Subhanallah. So I'm not just saying things to make you, you know, to gas you up, as they say. I'm not. I promise you. And subhanAllah, behind this subhanAllah, our mother Maryam was also willing. She sacrificed a lot. She protested outside of those doors of what we now know as Nasr al-Aqsa to enter. And even when she entered, they didn't allow her to, like, become a student of knowledge. SubhanAllah, I'm so proud of our ustadas who are receiving their ijazah, subhanAllah, in Qur'an. They're following in her footsteps. May Allah continue to ennoble their face and raise their rank. She suffered a lot. SubhanAllah. She's a single mother. 
Single mother. Another, subhanAllah, is in, in the example of our mother Hajar. I'll tell you, this is the last one I'll mention tonight, inshallah, and then we'll close in dua. In the case of our mother Hajar, you ever have a story in the Quran that makes you like want to dance? Do you ever you have that? No, you're not like me. I know. I'm making you do the boogie dirt boogie some. No, you're not like me. Mashallah, you guys are like at home, like, oh, you get like, you know, your heart shake, your heart quiver. Me, I'm like this. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Ya Allah. I'm like, this is great. Like, this is great. It's my heritage. I can't help it. <laughs> and so for me, it's the case of our mother Hajar. Alayha salam. The, the thought that when we go and make tawaf around the Kaaba, that she's buried there. The fact that the like the most blessing you can get like inside of the Hijrat Ismail, like in that area, that's where she's buried, right? The fact that Subhanallah, this is a woman that literally most people, if you're looking on the outside of it, you're thinking her husband abandoned her. You're thinking that that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has just thrown her away, literally in the desert, right? But subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves her in the desert with the child. So many stories of like just a woman and a child. She's alone in the desert, subhanAllah. And as Ibrahim alayhi salam, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam is walking away. Where are you going? Where are you going? Ah, did Allah tell you to do this? Then hasbi Allah. Then Allah is sufficient for me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of me. He leaves. He leaves. She runs out of water, she runs out of food. I always think about how, how was she when it got dark? You know, you know, we think about like, mashallah, all the lights from the clock tower and the McDonald's and all the hotels. No, none of that was there. She was literally a woman alone in the desert with the child and it got dark I just it's like Ya Rabbi did you send me here to die did you send me here to be eaten alive and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said listen the seed of iman that's in your heart they're gonna witness it to the end of time the seed of Iman, the seed of Tawakun, the seed of Taqwa that's in your heart, people are going to walk in your footsteps just to complete their faith. That you don't have, we don't complete our Islam of the body even until you walk in the footsteps of Hajar, until you make Hajj. <laughs> Until you go and visit her grave. Your, your iman is not even, you haven't finished it yet. You want to earn benefit? You want to become closer to Allah and go make Umrah? Go walk in her footsteps. Go do that. Literally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala builds the holiest city in the world around her. The holiest city in the world is built around her and her iman, and her taqwa, and her tawakkul. There's no secret why that would be the place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reveal the final message. There's no secret why that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi not only would be born there, not only that, that the Quran would be recited there, subhanAllah, but when the Prophet sallallahu is going to Isra and Mi'raj, and the angels come and wash his heart, they open his heart, and what do they pour inside? Zamzam, the fruit of her labor, the fruit of her iman. That's what the angels pour into the heart of the Prophet وسلم, for him to be able to take that journey of ascension. SubhanAllah. That which remains of her iman gets poured into the heart of the Prophet. 
الله أكبر الله أكبر There's something special about that When the tribe of Jurham comes And they come to her and they say Can we stay here? This is after Zemzem, after Jibra'il comes, splits open the earth for her, which I just want you guys to keep, like, Jibra'il comes and descends for her, right? Crocs open the earth for her. Zemzem flows to sustain her, subhanAllah. Tribe of Jurham, come, Jurham comes, and they ask her, can, you, can we stay here? And she says, yes, but I control the water. What I love, this is one of those moments you're just like, what? <laughs> like, Allah. Like, first of all, how bold are you? Right? You're a woman alone in the desert. There's no man here to protect you. What do you mean? Right? What are you talking about? We're an entire tribe. Woman, we could take you over. But that kind of confidence comes from what? From a woman who knows her Lord. That kind of confidence comes from a woman who knows Allah. I'm that subhanAllah, inna Allah ma'a sabirin. Inna Allah ma'a muhsinin. She, she has yaqeen. She has certainty despite what it looks like. Despite the apparent reality, she has absolute certainty, without doubt, without question. My Lord is there for me. My Lord will take care of me. That as long as I remain firm upon Sarat al Mustaqim, Allah will never leave me. Right. And so they honor that. They honor it. She controls the water. <laughs> right. She controls the water. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given each and every one of you a zamzam. What's your zamzam? What is your gift that is a means of healing and nurturing? That is a means of nourishment for those in your family, in your community. And you have to be careful. Right? You have to be careful to guard it. To say there's a gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving me and I can share it with you, but you can't have it. You hear that, women? Because I know we give away everything. We do. SubhanAllah. I'm actually shocked, laughing at women right now in our society. Why? They even gave up their womanhood. They even gave up their womanhood. Now they're like, wait, hold up, what? I'm a birthing person and you're a woman? Yeah, I said that. Right. <laughs> like they gave it up. Now, they're, now they wake up. Snap. Oh, wait. Wait, wait. Hold up. Hold up. No, 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 no. So what I'm saying to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I don't want you to think that, you know, do I have to be a prophet? I want you to listen to these stories. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is talking about these women in the Quran and the intimate relationship they have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the relationship he has with Umi Musa, with the mother of Musa. Literally, the mother of Musa is talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah is responding back to her. She's not in doubt about it. She's not like, am I tripping? Am I hearing things? Stop being emotional. Stop exaggerating. No, she's certain about it. This is what Allah wants me to do. And I'm doing it. She's certain about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, again, he's telling us the love story between him and the mother of Musa. Right? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given each and every one of you a unique gift that he tells you. When you make mention of me, I'm going to mention to you in a gathering better than that. We have so many narrations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about how oh, he is bragging about his servants. Right? Bragging about them. You see her? SubhanAllah. She's hungry. She's still fasting. She's thirsty. She's still striving. She got divorced. She feels broken. But she hasn't left this deen. That's 
subhanallah, she lost her job because she wanted to, to wear her hijab, she started her own business. She didn't have anybody else. All of her family turned against her, either because she converted to Islam or because she decided, like, I'm, I'm not going, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do this or that. I'm going to stick firm to this deen. And they're saying, Oh my God, you become a religious fanatic. She's like, Mm hmm, yeah, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Allah is bragging about you. He's bragging about you to the angels. Subhanallah. He literally sent a host of angels right now, tonight. There's a summit of angels. I'm not kidding. Wallahi. There is a summit of angels who came and said, I'm looking for this gathering where people are remembering Allah. And he found it. Right? That angel found it in San Francisco at MCC. We're in San Francisco, right? <laughs> he found it at MCC. And then he bragged, he told the other malaika, listen, come to what we, we found it. We found it. SubhanAllah. Right? There's a group of women up all night. They are making, they're making dhikr of Allah. They're making dua. And the angels come and they encircle that gathering with their wings and they make a dua for the people who are in that gathering. And says none of them leaves that gathering except all their sins are forgiven. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what you're saying, but he just wants to like brag about it to the, to the malaika. He's like, what are they saying? <laughs> He's like, Allah, they were saying, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah. So what did they ask for? <laughs> Allah, they were asking for Jannah. Right? Allah knows, but look how he's, he's asking them. He's like, have they seen it? No, Ya Rabbi, they haven't seen the Jannah. Mm -hmm. And what are they seeking refuge from? Ya Allah, they're asking to seek refuge in, in you from hellfire. And Allah says, mm -hmm. have they seen it? No, Ya Rabbi, they haven't seen it. Literally, this conversation right, is the answer to Allah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the malaika in the beginning when he said, I'm going to create, right, the khalifa of the earth. And they were like, oh, you're going to create someone who's going to spread mischief and going to shed blood. And Allah says, I know what you don't know. So in that later on, when he's saying this conversation to the malaika, you thought that the dunya was going to entice them. You thought they was going to be up in the club. <laughs> Turns out they're in the masjid. You thought they was going to be being watching in Netflix. Turns out they're in the masjid making dhikr, making dua, reading Quran. You thought they were going to spend their youth in the street. Turns out they traded in, subhanAllah, any of what they were claiming was youth. Traded that dunya in for the akhirah. Allah is bragging about you to the angels. And then Allah says, now be my witness that I have forgiven them. Allah is telling the angels, be my witness. I have forgiven them. Then the angels say, but wait, Ya Rabbi, there's somebody who came. He wasn't a part of the gathering. He just came for some need and they left. He said, well, the nature of that type of gathering is even if they pass by, I would forgive them too. That's the light they shed. That's the zamzam they offer as a healing and a mercy and a forgiveness for others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to have the type of iman that is a light for others in darkness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who he loves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those that are steadfast and never deviate. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be from the people of Elm. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be amongst those, Ya Allah, that you've granted ilmu laduni. Ya Rabbi, grant us an intimacy with you. Ya Rabbi, we ask you by your infinite mercy. Ya awlin awlin, ya akhirin akhirin, ya dhukuwatin matin, ya rahmin masakin, ya arhamu rahmin, ya arhamu rahmin, ya arhamu rahmin. Allah, give us a complete and perfect faith after which there is no disbelief. Give us certainty in you after which there is no doubt. And make us firm upon surat al-mustaqeen. Ya Allah, we ask that you please, by your gentleness and your mercy, 
Make our hearts pure for you, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi, make our hearts vessels for your light, Ya Rahmur Rahimin. Ya Rabbi, by this month of the Quran, Ya Rabbi, teach us the Quran. Grant us the insights into it, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi, bless us with its secrets by which we become nearer and closer to you, Ya Rahmur Rahimin. Allah, we ask that you bless us to walk in the footsteps of Sayyidina Muhammad Wasalam. Ya Rabbi, please heal us. Ya Rabbi, heal us from our all of our trauma. Ya Al Jabbar, put us back together after our brokenness. Ya Rabbi, fill us after all the loss that we have endured. Ya Arham Rahimin. Ya Rabbi, we ask you by your mercy, come to our rescue. Ya Rabbi, come to our rescue. Ya Rabbi, in our relationship with you. Come to our rescue and our deficiency in our deen. Ya Rabbi, we ask that you come to our rescue and stand between us and our hearts. Stand between us and our nafs. Ya Rabbi, by your mercy. Ya Rabbi, come between us and our desires. Ya Rabbi, come to our rescue from the West West. Ya Rabbi, come to our rescue against the shaitan. Ya Rabbi, Ya Nasir. Ya Rabbi, you are the one who grants victory. Ya Azizu, Ya Adim. Ya Rabbi, grant us a victory. Ya Rabbi. Ya Rabbi, number us from amongst those when you said, Qad aflaha mu'minun. Ya Rabbi, bless me to be from amongst them. Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi, we ask you by your mercy that you please come to the rescue of these women. Ya Allah. Come to the rescue of the Muslim women all over the world. Ya Rabbi, come to the rescue of Muslim women who are struggling, Ya Rabbi, as mothers, Ya Rabbi, who are struggling in their marriages, Ya Rabbi, come to the rescue of women, Ya Rabbi, who are struggling, Ya Rabbi, with their children, Ya Rabbi, come to the rescue of us, Ya Rabbi, that are taking care of our elderly parents, and we're, we're coming, we're becoming weak, Ya Allah, Ya al qawil Ya Mateen, Ya Rabbi, come to our rescue, Ya Rabbi, sometimes in this dunya we get so lost, so confused, Ya Al-Hadi, Ihdina Sirat al Ya Allah, Ya Rabbi, sometimes we don't know which direction to go we have wronged our own selves so we're begging you by your mercy ya rabbi make us firm make us steadfast ya rabbi grant us an istiqama from you that you will accept it from us ya arhamur rahimin ya rabbi we ask you by your mercy that you will grant us a complete and perfect pardon after which there is no sin in our book ya rabbi no trace of it ya rabbi the stain of our sin let it be removed from our own hearts be removed from our character Ya Rabbi, and by your gentleness and your mercy, remove the stain of our sin and our mistakes from upon the hearts of those that we've wronged, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi, bless those that we've harmed to forgive us, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi, and those that have wronged us, place it in our hearts to be able to forgive them, Ya Rahimin. For you are the disposer of all affairs. And so we ask you by your infinite mercy, Ya Rabbi, take care of all of our affairs, Ya Arhamur Rahimin. Ya Rabbi, don't leave us to ourselves even for the blink of an eye ya Allah ya Rabbi we ask that you please send down your malaika and every turn every every angle of our life ya arhamur rahimin we ask that you please organize it for us set it right for us ya Allah ya Rabbi we ask that you please protect us from the enemies of you and the enemies of us ya Rabbi protect us ya Rabbi from the fitna of Masih had the jal us and our children and our entire lineage to yom qiyamah bless us to have actions and speech and character that brings us near and close to you and take us away from actions and speech that take us away from you ya Allah ya Rabbi mold and shape us into be people of taqwa mold and shape us to be pe people ya rabbi of dhikr mold and shape us to be ahl al quran ya arham rahimin ya rabbi we ask you by your mercy that if wherever us or our children or our parents or our loved ones or our our descendants ya rabbi wherever they may even go astray ya rabbi we ask that you please guide us right ya rabbi wherever there is chaos in our life ya salam ya rabbi grant us harmony and grant us peace ya rabbi wherever we're broken and we're incomplete Complete, Ya Al Jabbar, please put us back together, Ya Arhamur Rahimin. Ya Rabbi, wherever we are in need, Ya Arzaq, Ya Kareem, Ya Rabbi, please provide for us in an abundance, Ya Rabbi. Ya Rabbi, wherever we are ignorant, Ya Rabbi, please grant us hikmah, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi, wherever we are in darkness, Ya Nur, grant us a light from you, Ya Arhamur Rahimin. Ya Rabbi, we come to you with every form of sickness. Ya Rabbi, we come to you with every deficiency. So we're 
begging you, Ya Rabbi, please heal us. Ya Rabbi, heal us, Ya Rabbi, from the sicknesses of our bodies. Ya Rabbi, heal us from the sicknesses of our mind. Ya Rabbi, heal us from the sicknesses of our soul. Ya Rahamur Rahimin. Ya Rabbi, we ask you by your mercy that you please heal us externally. Ya Rabbi, heal us internally, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi, bless us to see with the eye of mercy. Ya Rabbi, and remove from us this eye of criticism, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi, bless us to be a witness to you in every blink of our eye, Ya Rabbi. Let us recognize that it is only you, Ya Arhamur Rahimin. Ya Rabbi, we ask you by your mercy that you grant us your mercy. Ya Rabbi, that you grant us an intimacy with you, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi, grant us the best dua and the best answer. Grant us the best life and the best death, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi, have mercy on us when the angel of death comes to take our soul. And let the angel of death only take our soul while you're absolutely pleased with us, Ya Rabbi. While we have been granted your complete pardon, Ya Allah. While we have the guarantee of your Jannah, Ya Arhamur Rahimin. Ya Rabbi, we ask that you have mercy on us when the angel of death comes to take our soul and we breathe our last breath. Ya Rabbi, have mercy on us when they wash our bodies. Ya Allah, have mercy on us when they lower us into the grave. Ya Rabbi, when you lower us into the grave, let it be the messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wa salam, that greets us in sin salam. Ya Rabbi, don't deprive of his, his company. Ya Rabbi, don't deprive us of his company. Ya Rabbi, please don't deprive us of his company. Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, bless us to be near and close to him. Ya Rabbi, fi dunya wa akhira. Ya Rabbi, we ask you on the, on the day of resurrection, have mercy on us. Let it be the hand of the Prophet wasallam that pulls us out of our grave. Let it be next to him. That we stand on Yom Qiyamah. Ya Rabbi, let it be his blessed hand that, that takes us into Jannah. Let it be his blessed hand that we take a drink from at the home. Ya Rabbi, let it be his blessed hand, Ya Rabbi, that we cross the Sirat with. Ya Rabbi, we're not worthy of your Jannah, but we're too weak for your hellfire. Ya Rabbi, we're not worthy of your Jannah, but we are too weak for your reckoning. So we ask you by your gentleness and your mercy and your compassion, Ya Rabbi, please grant us a Jannah without reckoning, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi, don't let us be humiliated on your muqiyama. Ya Rabbi, save us from humiliation in this dunya and the akhira, us and our entire progeny to the yawm qiyama. Ya Rabbi, we ask that when the Prophet wasallam sees us, Ya Rabbi, let him beam with light and happiness from seeing us, Ya Rabbi. Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, let us enter into Jannah to Firdaus Ta'ala, us and all of our righteous ancestors and our parents, Ya Rabbi, Ya Mama, Ya Rabbi, Mama, Ya Rabbi, Mama, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi. Us and our parents, Ya Rabbi, and our entire descendants and our progeny to the Yawm Qiyamah. Ya Rabbi, any of our family members that are not guided, Ya Rabbi, guide them right. Wherever, Ya Rabbi, those who have gone astray, Ya Rabbi, bring them back to this deen, Ya Allah. Wherever they are confused about this deen, Ya Rabbi, give them yaqeen upon this deen, Ya Rahmur Rahimin. Ya Rabbi, let the Quran be our guide. Let it be, Ya Rabbi, some, let the Quran testify for us on Yawm Qiyamah and never against us, Ya Arhamur Rahimin. Ya Rabbi, bless our shuyukh and our teachers. Ya Rabbi, please bless them with the highest states and elevation, expansion. Ya Rabbi, continue to increase them in knowledge and wisdom and insight. Ya Rabbi, bless us to continue to learn and to benefit from them, Ya Rabbi. Preserve them, Ya Arhamur Rahimin, in excellence and in care, Ya Allah. Allahumma barahmatika thabbit kulubana, thabbit aqdamala ala suratan mustaqima, Ya Arhamur Rahimin. Ya Rabbi, Allahumma innaka afuun tahibbul afwa fuafuanna. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. 
Ya Allah, 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 Ya Arhamur Rahimin. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Habibina Mawlana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Amin afwanik.